um i'm just people are joining right now that's that's awesome um i'm gonna go ahead and get started just because we've kind of got a lot of stuff to go over today being that it's our first time we kind of got some of that i don't know like the the class setup and rule like rules and those types of things so i'm gonna start start going and if you have any questions please interrupt ask um let me know and I will do my best to answer all of those questions as they come up. So I always encourage students to turn their screens on. Um, again, I enjoy seeing my students. It also helps. I've noticed that, you know, the more attentive and engaged you are in class, that seems to correlate to, uh, you know, better performance, better grades, those types of things. Which brings me to my first point, grades, okay? We gotta talk about how our class is structured. Everyone always wants to know, what are we doing about grades, okay? So how it works is we have our semester grade. Your semester grade is split up into two different sections, okay? You've got quarter one and quarter two. Quarter one is going to be worth 40% of your grade, and quarter two is going to be worth 60% of your grade. Okay. Now, you might ask, why is it different? Um, the reason is that there's more days in quarter one, or excuse me, there's more days in quarter two than there is in quarter one, which means you can learn more stuff. Um, and it also is, uh, there's a final a semester final. Just gonna add a few more. There's also a semester final um, for quarter two. So there's three categories that your grades are broken to broke down into. The first one is that you have 20% is formative. Now, what I mean when I say formative is I want you to think about the word practice, okay? So again, this would be like your classwork. This would be like your homework. These are just things that we practice. I preach that we have to have a growth mindset. We have to be it's not about where we like just about getting the answer right it's about improving ourselves and going from wherever we're at to getting better we're trying to grow as uh students as people um kind of in all aspects of life so i give you guys three attempts on your formative assessments okay and again so my expectation is let's say i got a two out of five on the first on the first uh assignment i would expect that you would think about it and say hmm i got these two problems wrong i'm gonna try it again okay so again i want us to keep working even when we make mistakes oftentimes we learn more from our mistakes than our successes so the reason i give you guys multiple attempts is that i want you to try it multiple times until you get it right uh, i had a question in an earlier class that said well which what gets graded your highest score will be the one that gets graded. And then another question was, well, what if I need more than three attempts? Again, I consider this practice. Sometimes we got to practice more than we do for, you know, in math, maybe than we would for science. Totally okay. I would just ask that if you need more than three attempts, you ask me about it. And again, if we can't get it after three attempts, let's probably meet. Let's try to find a time you can come to my office hours or my drop-in hours and we'll figure it out together because there's some type of misconception or something's not aligning correctly so as to why we're not getting it correct so absolutely you can get more than three attempts but you just got to reach out okay that's the first category our second category is our is 20 percent, and it's our class connects okay and that's what you're doing right now so again, this is required. It's how we take attendance. So if you can't attend class, which you know I had a student say, got an orthodontist appointment. Okay, no problem. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna share that document. I'm gonna record that this is being recorded right now, and I'll post it so that you will be expected to watch that lesson. And then how do I know that you're following along? How do I know that you're doing it? Is that there will be some type of either problem or assignment that you have to do that we describe in the class connect so that I'll see you did that assignment, you will get your credit for being present and being in class again. 
The reason I do that, and it may be different in other classes, is again, I can't tell if you're working or not. I can't tell if you're listening or not, if your screen's not on. So again, I'm just going to, I will, at the end of class, we'll go over what your assignment is. This week is super easy, okay? This week is super, super easy. And again, you'll get the, you'll get the points, you'll get the credit. So that leaves us with our third category, which is 60% and it's your summative. So again, when you hear summative, you're gonna think tests and quizzes. And this is basically show me what you know, okay? I need to know what you know. So on these, initially, you're only gonna have one attempt. Now, there are opportunities for retakes. There are opportunities to earn points back, but that requires you to reach out. I need you to say, hey, Mr. Larson, I didn't do so well on this quiz. There's going to be additional steps. You might have, I might give you practice problems. I might give you, I might have you meet with me so we can go over. It might be, hey, I made the same mistake multiple times. Let's correct that one mistake and you can redo something or you can retake it or you can earn points back, okay? So again, it is set at only one attempt. However, I'm open to allowing you opportunities to earn points back but again that's put that responsibility is put on you as the student to reach out to me and to figure out where we maybe made the mistake or where we goofed up on and we're again growth mindset we're going to grow from there we're going to learn from there as far as quarter two it's very similar okay 20 percent formative 20 percent class connect um the the difference is there's an extra category okay your summative is only 50%. And then there will be a semester final that is 10% of your grade. So the, that's the only difference, slight difference, okay, is we add that semester final. Questions, concerns, comments before we kind of continue on moving forward, questions about the grading, how it's structured, anything like that. Again, you can unmute, you can type in the chat box, you can email me um, separately if you have questions. So the next part is what is it gonna take to be successful in class, okay? First and foremost, there's gonna be three applications that you need to download, okay? So how do you download apps? You'll notice in the bottom right of my screen, I have a four colored, oops, I have a four colored box, okay? This is called self-service. So, this is how we can download apps. So the first app that I need you to download, and again, I like using Desmos. It's very useful. If you have a graphing calculator, you can also use that as well, okay? I have one too. So, but you don't necessarily need it if you download this app. So you gotta download the Desmos graphing calculator. And if you wanna download the scientific calculator, it won't hurt as well. Um, so far, I believe everything that we need to do, we can do on this calculator. So if you've got your iPad, um, please download that. If you're working on a uh, Mac, again, there's a desmos.com. You can look at the, like the website that works as well. But I really like that app. The second app that you're gonna need to be successful, and again, you can find all this in self-service, is Notability, okay? It's what I use to write my notes. It's basically just a notebook, okay? So again, you'll need to download this app. And this is what, if I were to give you a worksheet, you could put that worksheet right into Notability and you can write on it. So you can use your finger, you can use a stylus like I have. Um, the thing is that about Notability is that, oh, I lost my train of thought there. Um, oh. Um, so I would prefer that you use this. Some students, and again, if I haven't given you a worksheet yet, but if you do get a worksheet, I've had some students in other classes print it out and write on it, which is absolutely 100% okay. The, the, re, the issue with that is they've been taking pictures and then uploading it, and sometimes they don't take pictures of like both sheets of paper, or they don't take pictures of all the problems. So just know that I've been real lenient this first week, but 
if you do paper and pencil like work, I have to be able to see it and read it. So that's why I prefer notability because I know it'll be clear. You can change colors. Again, this is like what I'm using right here. You can change colors, you can highlight, you can move stuff. So there's a lot of things you can do with notability. And the third app, and this is probably one of the more important ones, is that there are two kind of ways to access Schoology. You can access Schoology through the, where is it? There it is. You can access Schoology through the app, okay? The problem with the app, and again, I've run into this sometimes, and I have this problem even, is I open it up and sometimes I click on an activity and this is what happens. It just shows up as a blank screen. So the workaround is that you have to use the internet. You have to use Safari. So if you look on self-service, this Schoology web clip is a link, okay? It's a link that opens it up right to Safari. And so if you do that, you'll be able to do, so I have this app downloaded in the bottom right. I click it and it just jumps right onto Schoology on the internet. You'll be able to access everything you need and it'll work just fine if you download that app and use that. So like, for example, let's say lesson three, okay? Before, if I was using the app, it wasn't showing up. Now let's say, hmm, I'm gonna preview it, start attempt. Okay, I can do all of the things I need to do. I can type, I can write, everything like that. Okay, so super important that you download those three apps in order to be successful. Uh, let me check my notes. Any questions about that before we jump into our examples for the week? And that's what a normal week would be like. Again, that was the boring stuff. I just had to get, I had to get that out of the way. Um, we had to talk about that stuff. Now we're just gonna get, this is like what a normal class would be again. My expectation is you've watched the, you, you've looked at the assignments, you've, you've tried stuff on your own. And then when you come to class, you're asking questions about maybe something that you didn't quite understand or weren't quite sure of. Let's see here. Let's get this right here. Okay. So I'm on Schoology. Okay. This is our class. What you see, if you're ever not sure what to do, I want you to click on semester one. Uh, I think that, yeah, okay, join, perfect. Semester one pacing guide. I always recommend if it's blue, click the link here and it opens up a brand new window. It's much easier to see. So again, anything written in black, anything written in black is assigned, but not graded. So you had to watch first week, you had to watch the intro video and watch the first lesson. Anything written in red is going to be graded. So what I do is I open you know, everything on a Monday. It's not due till that following Sunday. So by Monday, every Monday, I'm gonna go through and make sure everything for that week is graded. I'm gonna upload it to Infinite Campus. Again, you to check your grades, you gotta use Infinite Campus. The grading necessarily on Schoology, like your overall grade is not necessarily accurate. So again, I'll, I'll get, I can guarantee you that I'll do that at least every Monday. So let's go to week two. Notice I had drop-in hours on Tuesday and Wednesday. I did see some of you. We have our class connect at 1030. And so again, here's everything that we need to do. I call it a test. Again, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a test, um, but again, I should add the due dates here. Everything is due this Sunday, which would be 9-19. I do 9, 19, do 9, 19, do 9, 19. This is a working document. So again, I'm going to be updating it uh, as soon as I get the materials ready, I will update it with what you need to know. So if you're ever confused, I recommend going there. The other document that you have to look at is the Class Connect document. So if I open this up, again, I always recommend clicking on these links. 
I see that here's my class connects. Okay. Here's a link right here. If you're wondering how to get to our meeting to this week, I'll also post them on updates, but you can just go right here and click here. Next week, the time is different. I try to keep them all the same. I have a conflict next week. So next week we're gonna be at 1230. Remember, these are required. So if you miss class, I know some of you, you might have a doctor's appointment, you might be in physical school, okay? I'm gonna post the, I'm gonna upload them to YouTube. I'll post the recording. And again, we've got our first assignment, class connect number one, nine, 16. And we'll talk about that at the end of class. So there's class connects. Awesome. All right. Uh, get rid of that. That was the boring stuff. We've got about nine minutes where we, I will run through some examples. Again, this is, if you were to look off of Schoology, it's an example from lesson one, an example from lesson two, and an example from lesson three. The three or the three lessons for this week. So one thing we did is we simplified expressions. So again, this would be like a normal class where I would give you problems. I would expect that you would try them. You might be writing them down again on a piece of paper or on notability and working from there. So let's say that we have the expression five M squared minus four N plus two six N minus three M. First thing I do when I have parentheses and a number outside like this is I need to use the distributive property and multiply this out. So five times M squared is five M squared. Five times negative four N, positive times a negative is always a negative. Plus two times six is 12 N and two times negative three is negative six M. Now I need to combine like terms. So I'm gonna take out my highlighter and I'm gonna say, I've got an M squared here. Do I have any other M squareds? No. So all I can say is five M squared. Now I can, let's go to M's. Do I have any M's? I do, ooh, let's undo that. Forgot, I didn't grab the highlighter there. So I see that I've got an M. However, I don't have any other M's to combine. So I'm just gonna rewrite it as subtracting six M. Don't forget to bring that negative with. I do see that I have some N's, okay? I have two N's. So I need to add their coefficients. Coefficients are the number in front of your variable. So I'm gonna say, well, negative 20 N plus 12 N is negative eight N. I have no more like terms. I have nothing else to do. Therefore, I have simplified as far as I can. Until I know what M is, or until I know what N is, I can't do anything. The other equation we, or the other thing we kind of talked about was solving equations. So let's say 12Y plus 4XY equals negative 10. And let's say that X equals two. So one thing we want to do is we want to get Y by itself. So the question might say, solve for Y. So I'm going to try to isolate Y. I've got a Y here and I've got a Y here. So let's factor that out. So let's factor out a Y and all we're left with is 12 plus 4X equals negative 10. Thinking about the distributive property, y times 12, y times 4x, okay? If that's the case, what I need to do is, if I wanna get y by itself, anything I do on the left, I'm gonna do on the right, I need to divide by 12 plus 4x. So this is gonna cancel out. Anything I do on the left, I'm gonna do on the right. So I could say that y, equals negative 10 over 12 plus 4x. So that would be my equation for y. 
Now I want to get the actual answer. Now I want to get the actual answer. So we know that X equals two. So I'm going to take this formula and I'm going to plug in every time I see an X, I'm going to plug in a two. So this is Y equals negative 10 over 12 plus four times two is eight. Okay, negative 10 over 12 plus eight is 20. And we can simplify negative 10 divided by 10 is one, 20 divided by 10 is two. So Y equals negative one half. We were able to solve for Y. That's our second example, our last example. And again, this is review of the lessons is, let's say that you can clean your room in eight minutes and your brother can clean his room in 12 minutes. Let's say that we work at a hotel, we clean rooms after um, people have stayed in them. So I want to know how long until how long is it going to take until we've cleaned 30 rooms? Let's say there's 30 rooms on the floor that we have to work or that we're working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up proportions. I'm going to say, well, I can clean one room in eight minutes. And my brother can clean one room in 12 minutes and I want this to equal 30 rooms. Well, what I need to do is I need to think, hey, do I have common denominators here? Anytime we have fractions, we got to have a common denominator and we don't. We have 8 and 12. So I think what numbers do 8 and 12 have in common? 8, 16, 24, 12, 24. So I see, hey, they both got a 24 that's a multiple so what i'm going to do is i'm going to multiply this by three and this by three to get 24 and i'm going to multiply this one by two and this one by two so it's going to be 3r over 24 plus 2r over 24 equals 30. now i have common denominators so i can add them together Add my numerators, my denominators stay the same. 3r plus 2r is 5r. And then to, to get r by itself, I have to multiply by the reciprocal. So 24 over 5. Anything I do on the left, I better do on the right to keep it balanced. So this is like 30 over 1 times 24 over 5. 24 divided by 24 cancels out. 5 divided by 5 cancels out. I'm left with R. 30 times 24 is 720. 1 times 5 is 5. 720 divided by 5 equals 144. Okay. So how long would it take? It would take 144 minutes to equal or to clean 30 rooms, 144 minutes. So there's our examples, we're running short on time. So I just wanted to talk about, again, how do you get credit for today? What's your assignment gonna be? I will explain that. If I look on Schoology, I can't see the top, I gotta move it, how do you move it? There it is, okay. So again, I go to my Class Connect folder, I see, Hey, here's my assignment, super easy assignment for today. All it is is what are the three apps that you need downloaded? Desmos, Notability, and Schoology Web Blend. Okay? You download those three things, you fill out this form, you will get the full credit for today's Classroom Connect. That's all I have for you. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you guys next week at 1230, 1230. No problem.